Hello everyone, I'm Brian Wong of Mixed Big Future. I've previously spoken about Tesla with Warren Redlick, where we discussed how I noted that everyone was missing how financially weak the legacy auto were and more vulnerable to bankruptcy and uh, disruption from, from Tesla. What now I'm gonna discuss is something else that people missed is that Tesla has already solved its battery supply problem without 4680 batteries, just with CATL LFP batteries. This is the reason that the Tesla bulls underestimated Tesla's Q4 2021 by about 10% and how they missed also in, in Q3 by, by a fairly large amount. So they're missing by growing amounts because they did not factor in the, the impact of CATL's huge LFP supply. So I'll provide the evidence for this and I'll be the, how, how this is a growing strength that, that they have. So four main things have been underestimated, short-term and long-term. Short-term, Tesla already has an abundance of LFP batteries, basically double their previous China battery supply, which means that Tesla is really not constrained from battery supply for the first half of 2022 and perhaps longer. Tesla has backward demand to absorb a doubling of production. This is Raven noted that Tesla has, <clears throat> when you try to order a Tesla, it takes you six, six months to nine months paying the model. And this is works out to 300,000, 500,000 cars, which if Tesla had already had sold every car they made 300,000 in Q4, if you double that to 600,000 for each of the next two quarters, that'd be 1.2 million cars. But because you already have backward demand, you could double that production and still sell the 1.2 million cars. The long term is that iron LFP batteries can ramp much faster, much, much faster than nickel batteries. And this will be have a huge impact. China, Europe, and California have passed 10% EV adoption, which means a surge in EV demand over the next 10, five years. Norway went, went over 10% and took six years to get from 10 to 70%. So this is also underestimated in the long term aspect. Let me discuss the CATL um, factor. <clears throat> so as you noted, C uh, Tesla made 305,000 cars, 306,000 cars in Q4, 308,000 were delivered. There were expectations of mainstream analysts of 267,000 cars, and even Tesla bulls only expected 208,000. So there was a miss of about 10% in terms of what Tesla did. And there's um, reports that CATL in three months got a new battery factory, which is built right beside Tesla Shanghai to 48 gigawatts per year production, which is four gigawatt hours per month, which is the amount that I estimate that um, <clears throat> Tesla was using from, from China based on the, the production numbers to make their 170,000 vehicles there based on the battery pack size. And then Tesla is still ramping in, in China. And this can mean instead of 1.3 to 1.5 million cars, it can mean 1.9 to 2.5 million cars in 2022. Some of that will also increase production also from um, some expected 4680 batteries, but the bulk of it will be from the CATL batteries. <clears throat> so I, I worked out, you know, going back to 2020, how many cars um, be produced in China and Fremont, how many batteries that would mean, estimating based on 60 kilowatt hour packs on average in China, 70 kilowatt hour packs, you know, sometimes a larger 100 kilowatts for the S and the X. So I've worked that all out and I've also broken down where the production is coming from, CATL, Panasonic, or LG Chem, or the two new 4680 sources, gone from 2020 out to <clears throat> 20, end of 2022. CATL only started making, uh, providing Tesla with batteries at the end last quarter of Q4 2020. And that fast ramp of getting new CATL supplies started to have impact in 2021, really towards the, the second half of the year. And that's when the outperformance started to occur. And the, the, the massive outperformance in December is huge because that, that was 115,000 cars in December. 
up 18% just from the month before, which was 97,000 cars. So CHL getting that 60% capacity for Tesla basically doubling supply, which is not fully absorbed. That 18,000 increase in the month, there's those batteries are enough for 60, for 60,000 cars, maybe 70,000 cars. So the, this will continue. And then there were the statements from Tesla back at the uh, 2020 annual meeting, which was at the beginning of the Tesla battery day. So they had the, the meeting before Tesla battery day where, where you know, reported on the 2020 annual <coughs> figures. And he said that Tesla China could reach a million or more cars per year. I do not believe that statement was from the new plan expansion that, that was announced in December 2021. The statements made back then on battery day were, I believe, an estimation of the capacity that is in China from the existing facilities, the Mall X, the Mall uh, 3 and Mall Y plants. Further evidence for that is the recent videos showing cars coming out of um, Giga Shanghai every 38 to 42 seconds. You just factor that in, 10% downtime, et cetera. That would mean 1.1 million cars at those if cars are pushed out every 38 to 42 seconds. So then the limitation is only batteries. Then you could fully get to uh, that 1 to 1.1 million run rate, which is 83, 84,000 cars for 1 million, 90,000 cars per month for 1.1 million. I think it will take more than one month for Tesla to absorb that doubling of batteries. And of course, you know, we I can thank Rob Maurer for his great analysis of, <clears throat> of monthly and weekly production estimates for Shanghai, <clears throat> for Tesla and Fremont, and, and on and on. So I project in 2022, and the, the surprise, four gigawatt hours per month will be nearly 70,000 cars per month. I have a slow absorption if, if somehow Tesla was near limitations off of December and take the slower ramp, I still come out to 2 million cars um, for this slower um, ramp of China. <clears throat> but I think that this fundamental shift from Tesla being severely battery constrained to virtually not battery constrained <clears throat> is something that is, has, will be playing out even more. So I, if I do a Q1 ramp to that 1 million number, and then we get to 413,000 cars in with very modest uh, German, uh, Germany and Austin numbers, 413,000 cars for Q1, which would be like, again, another 25% beat over some estimates of say 330,000, just another 10% bump from the 308,000 or 340,000 cars, 10% bump up from Q4. Instead, it's going to be another monster 30% 30, 30 beat. <clears throat> so, and then that would continue in Q2, you know, just by <clears throat> staying at 90, 95,000. And then that April uh, expansion, which Tesla was $108 million to expand from you know, up to 50% capacity or, or some other amount, say 30, 40% from the existing 1.1 million. Then we go up to like toward 1.5 million. And I believe that they can continue, we can expand that if the, the long term scenario of increasing EV demand is there, then Tesla would continue to expand there. And the, the rate to, which with Tesla can, can build new, new supply, new capacity at existing plants, and again, unearthly, because they're saying four to five months to expand uh, China. And that's just one expansion. Why wouldn't they can then do another expansion in the second half of the year if the demand is there? <clears throat> Same thing for well, Fremont has more space limitations, but there could be additional supply and production there as these LFP batteries free up more nickel batteries. And then second half of the year, even more premium batteries with the 4680s. So, so I think that this, the strong bull case then goes to 2.5 million vehicles. Here's a slower, you know, the ramp, Q1 to 1 million, and then going beyond that, to the higher numbers, and then put the total for China 1.3 million, 
and then keep Fremont at a modest 640, basically the 50% expansion that Tesla has talked about. And then what I think are, are uh, reasonable expansions for Germany and Austin, where they've been sandbagging, again, the amount of production that they would have. So <clears throat> overall, I'm expecting that the, the, the Tesla could get 413,000 cars in, in Q1 of 2022, 530,000 cars in Q2. 530,000 cars would be nearly as much as the last half of 2021. And if uh, CATLs, you know, that the LP production was not a one-off, that they can continue to make more <clears throat> batteries. Their, their limitation may be more on lithium supply than on the ability to, to build batteries quickly. The other boom for, for LFP is that in 2022, the, many of the patents for LFP expire, which means the LG, Kim, Panasonic, and other battery makers, Tesla as well, could start making LFP batteries <clears throat> and not just uh, BYD and CATL. So then that would speed up the, the, the long-term Mid, to, mid two, three year, four year supply of, of batteries to meet the expanding demand of, if EV demand does go to 70% of global cars, 50 million cars by 2026, 2027, then LFP will be able to match up to that demand. The supply and, the, and demand would match up to this transformation. So we'll be able to monitor this uh, closely because every month, uh, the China Passenger Car Association gives car production numbers. So if we're seeing 70,000, 80,000 cars, you know, reported for a prior month and then and increasing beyond 100,000 in 2022, and then we know that the Super Bowl case is, is occurring even before the quarterly numbers. But I definitely believe that until the quarterly volume numbers get released each, each time, people won't believe it, even if they see large numbers coming out of China, because this has happened, happened in Q4. There were large numbers coming out of China, but then that last month was even bigger and people got surprised by how big it was. So this uh, continuing rapid growth, people will lag in believing it. So that means that each month after the close of a quarter, April for Q1, <clears throat> July for Q2, <clears throat> October for Q3, January of next year for Q4, that there'll be a shock and surprise and a run up in the stock price because of this uh, surprising capability to expand demand. And then eventually there'll be some adjustments where people will see, oh yes, LFP batteries are for real, the, ex the expansion of the ramp is as fast as this is showing. So uh, thank you for your time. And that's what it is my, my analysis of Tesla solving its battery problem, battery supply problems with CATLFP and then other LFP batteries and then the 4680s. Thank you.